We've thought about the principle of moments and we've thought a little bit about the centre of gravity. Let's think now about applying the principle of moments to a slightly more complicated case where instead of having a beam with just one pivot, we've got a beam which is supported in two places. Now a good example of this would be a simple bridge. So let's imagine that we've got a simple bridge like this with supports at either side. Okay? And uh, as we uh, were thinking about that bridge, we, we now know that it has a centre of gravity, which is where the weight of the bridge is thought to act. So because it's symmetrical, it's, it's even thickness, the centre of gravity is going to be right in the middle. So my bridge has got a weight there, let's suppose it's a thousand newtons, right in the middle. Uh, and let's, uh, let's imagine as well that my bridge is six metres in length. So there's three metres on either side of the centre of gravity, like that. Now, what do we know about the forces that each of these supports is providing? Well, if it's in equilibrium, it's balanced. So this force here, which we're going to call F1, and this force here, which we can call F2, the two supporting forces on the supports on either side. Because it's in equilibrium, we know that those two forces must add up to a thousand, and it's pretty symmetrical. So it's reasonable to say that F1 and F2 will both be the same, they'll both be 500 newtons. So that's nice and easy. But let's uh, add a little complication to our story. Let's imagine that somebody comes driving along in a car. So we're going to have a car on the bridge. And the car, which for the sake of argument might be, say, 3,000 newtons, isn't in the middle. Okay, let's suppose that it's uh, four metres across the bridge there. Alright, what's going to happen now? Now we've got a total force downwards of 4,000, so F1 and F2, to balance it, they're going to have to add up to 4,000 as well. But are they going to be the same or not? It was alright when it was symmetrical, but now we've got a car, the car's over this side of the bridge. What's that going to do to the size of the two forces? Is it going to make this one bigger or this one bigger? Well, We'll have to work it out. Uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to apply the principle of moments again, but this time we're going to use a little trick. We're going to take the moments around either end of the bridge. In fact, we really actually only need to do it from this end of the bridge. We're going to concentrate on this end of the bridge, and we can imagine, if you like, that the bridge is pivoted with a pivot here and that there's some forces which are going to try and turn the bridge clockwise and there are forces which are going to turn it anti-clockwise and each of those forces creates a moment and those moments have to be balanced. So, uh, let's do that. The reason we, we're going to put our pivot here, by the way, rather than in the middle, is because it's a handy little trick. If we make the pivot here, then this force disappears from the equation. And the reason it disappears is because the moment, if you remember, is force times distance. And this force now is at zero distance from our pivot. So we're handily going to be able to forget all about F1 and just use a little bit of math to work out F2. All right, so let's have a go. Let's start off with the clockwise moments. What forces have we got that are trying to spin the bridge clockwise? Imagine you pivoted here, forget about the, uh, uh, imagine you pivoted here, let's just concentrate for the sake of argument on the clockwise one, forget about the anti clockwise to start. All right, well, we've got the, the weight of the bridge, which is a thousand, and it's at a distance of three. So we've got a thousand times three as a contribution to the clockwise moment. And then we've got also, the weight of the car, which is 3,000, and that's 4 metres from our pivot. Uh, those 
because of the forces which are trying to spin the bridge clockwise. Now let's think about the anti-clockwise moments. And like I say, we can ignore F1 because we're imagining that our beam is pivoted here. So in fact, our only force that's trying to spin the bridge anti-clockwise is F2. Okay, F2 will be creating an anti-clockwise moment and that will be equal to force times distance. The force is F2 and the distance from the pivot is 6. Because we've got 3 metres and 3 metres to make 6 metres in total. Okay, so that's our little equation for this situation. Let's uh, see if we can solve that. We've got 3,000 there plus 3 fourths of 12,000 there, and that's equal to F2 times 6. 3,000 plus 12,000 makes 15,000. So F2, I divide both sides by 6, will be equal to 15,000 divided by 6. Might need a calculator for that, or you might be able to do it in your head. I'm going to do it by factorising a bit. Divide top and bottom by 3, we've got 5,000 over 2. And divide that by 5,000 by 2 gives you 2,500 newtons of force. So if you think about it, the total downwards force here is 4,000, 2,500 newtons on that one that will leave 1,500 newtons on this one. So the weight, is, uh, the weight of the car is, has the effect of making the necessary upwards force on this side of the bridge a little bit larger than the force that we need on this side of the bridge. That, that's kind of what you'd expect in that situation. That's a little bit more of a complicated example, but it shows how we can use the principle of moments by taking moments about different positions. And a good trick to use is to take the moments at the point of one of your unknown forces because then it vanishes from the equation makes it simpler to solve.